Jitter, how's the first couple days of camp going being out of the field? Good, man. Uh, good energy. You know, just getting back out there, starting to play football, flying around. It's just been fun. You know, this is what we do. This is how we make a living. So coming out here is, is always a good time. What difference have you seen, maybe in the understanding everybody has last year at this time, a couple days into camp, just compared to this year? Um, man, I, I'd just say the energy. You know what I'm saying? We're just coming out. Um, all of us are focused, wanting to accomplish one thing, you know. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's all I can really say. We're just coming out with a whole, whole new energy, so. How much easier is it this year now that you understand the scheme, you know what they want, you get the verbiage, whereas last year it's just a complete learning? Uh, I'm still learning. Uh, I don't think I ever got it, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's still learning, so um, I'm not going to speak too much on last year. You know, I'm still always trying to improve and learn. What's it like this year having the addition of Marcus Epps in the room? Man, he's awesome. Um, that's my dog. You know, ever since we came in the first day, um, he's just, you know, we've been talking. Um, you know, just picking his brain, about what he knows, he's been picking my brain, just trying to help each other out. <clears throat> but outside of football, man, he's just a good person and just fun to be around. So. What's that uh, process like, kind of developing chemistry with him on the field, kind of getting to know each other's, what, what, what you like? Um, I mean, the chemistry, you know, for us, is just making sure we're on the same page, the communication, you know, making sure everybody on the defense is on one accord. Um, and if we can do that, then, you know, we'll have a good chance of, you know, at that play specifically, so. I realize you're a safety, he's a corner, but could you talk about the speed that your Korean brings mm -hmm. to that defensive being clearly that's an upgrade speed wise. Would you talk about him please? Yeah, he's just yeah, he's fast like you said. Um young guy, he's fast, uh, but I mean that's really all I can really say right now. Um like I said, he brings good energy as well. He's hungry, um, eager to learn and you know, fun to be around as well. He's always wanted to be around the football, always wanted to learn, so the other day, Max was kind of talking about the non-negotiables that he has in the defense alignment room, obviously among the defense. Just for you in the secondary, what are some non-negotiables that you believe that your secondary has? Um, man, I think we just need to come out there every day and you know approach it just with communication, fundamentals, and you know if we can do that, then like I said before, we'll have a good starting spot before the play. Okay. I guess, how did how did your off season go? And like, are you learning how to manage an off season? I mean, that's I guess some players learn as they go on their career. Mm. Do you do you kind of understand what you need to do in an off season to be ready for training camp? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just studying, you know, studying, film watching, um, and then just staying active, you know, working out, making sure, you know, you're doing all your stuff, you know, DB drills, um, just the usual kind of stuff, you know, um, just studying like any other profession would. Thank Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Questions for Rob? Nice Appreciate it. How, how have the first couple of days gone? What have you seen from, uh, from the defense in terms of coming all together and learning everything? Yeah, I think we're off to a great start. We just finished practice four here. Um, defense is coming together in terms of communication, effort, discipline, the things that we want to really focus and improve on in the off season. So. Just from day one to day four, our effort to the ball, our effort attacking the ball at the finish has been uh, already, we're raising that standard. So we just got to keep holding each other accountable and good things will happen. I know it's going to take 17 games to kind of define what this defense is all about. But as you sit here today, what do you want the characteristics of this defense to be about? Yeah, I, I love a blue collar, gritty defense that's stingy, always attacking the ball, making plays, making turnovers. Um, at the end of the day, there's not much difference between a two and a four yard gain. But when you make those splash turnover plays, those really affect the outcome of the game. So we're, how can I get my hand on a ball? How can I punch this ball out? How can I get in a passing window? Maybe make that quarterback throw it a few feet higher in the air so I give my secondary time to make a play on the ball. Um, good defenses get PBUs, make tackles. Great defenses turn the ball over and score a touchdown. So that's what we're looking to do. Punch out on Devontae. I think you're on the field when that happens. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, always hungry for the ball. I mean, we're not going just to bring the guy to the ground. We want to rip that ball from the body. So any chance that we can get to do that, uh, that goes into effort and having a conscious decision that we're always attacking the football. So, yeah. What's uh, stood out or impressed you about playing next to Divine Diablo? Yeah, Divine is a great communicator. He's a great leader. He uh, knows this defense in and out. He's been in the system his second year, so he's really uh, taking great steps. 
And um, he's a great football player. At the end of the day, you want you want to surround yourself on a defense with 12 hungry players who will do anything for to get that ball. So um, I love playing with them. Obviously, when you were in Pittsburgh, there was a lot of great veteran guys around you. But now you come into a situation where you are the veteran guy. How do you physically but also mentally prepare yourself throughout the offseason to take on a bigger workload? Yeah, I mean, it comes down to leadership, uh, showing guys what we want to be as a defense, and not just by talking it in the meetings, going out there and practice every day, showing that effort, uh, showing the attack on the football. I'm going to keep reiterating that because that's a main point of emphasis for me, and I want the guys around me ball hungry. I mean, good players make 100 tackles. They might get a contract the next year. They might not. You are a linebacker with five-plus turnovers. You're going to be in this league a long time. So. I'm telling the guys, find ways to get that ball out and to make plays. How much of that message comes from linebacker coach Antonio Pierce, who did it at the highest level, obviously? Yeah, I love working with Antonio. Uh, coach Pierce has obviously done it for a long time in the league. And when you got somebody like that in your meeting room, as the leader of our room, uh, you, you listen and you want to soak in all the information. He's been to the game that we want to play, and he's won those big-time games being the green dot leader of that defense. So he has so many great ideas and coaching points, and I just uh, want to soak up everything he can give me. Robert, I want to ask you about two players. First, a UDFA from last year, Luke Masterson, had a really good rookie season. What do you see from him? He reminds a lot of people of you. He is a hungry, athletic strong kid who is willing to do whatever it takes to be a champion. He comes in with that championship mindset every day, looking to get better, looking to be a good teammate. So there's nothing more I could ask from him. And then following up, there's a UDFA this year, Drake, that they like, that they optimistic about. What have you seen from I Clearly no pads, I get that. But what have you seen so far from him? Very similar in that mindset. Looking for that winning edge is what I call it. What can I do a little bit different? And he comes and seeks advice and opinions. And I love that, seeing that from young players. Going into year six, when I can get around even other veteran guys and try to find their winning edge, um, you always got to search for it. Because the moment you, you stop searching for that winning edge is the moment you're out of this league. So we all are here trying to refine our crafts, get better every day, and be a good teammate. You used the word mindset probably about eight times here. Um, do you feel like? Playing defense, forcing turnovers can be a mindset, something that you know you, you, you think about and make it happen. It doesn't happen by accident. I always say you don't accidentally become an NFL linebacker, uh, undrafted player going on year six. It doesn't happen by accident. So it is that intentional mindset. It's something that you think about during practice, after practice, when you're at home, first thing you wake up in the morning. So you kind of live that life. It's all you – you're consumed by it, and that's something that it that brings you to that next level. It sounds like your your personal messaging is about forcing turnovers, getting to the ball. How much of that comes from the team? Obviously, it's been a, an issue the last couple of years. I've been able to do that. So, how much of that comes from the top, and how much is that just you're bringing that to this team? Oh yeah, I mean, every everybody, every position coach is talking about it on the defensive side of the ball. Every position coach on offense is talking about taking care of the ball. Football is the name of the game. That ball is gold. And I always say when you're running with it, you're running with the hopes and dreams of the team. When you get a chance to get an interception, you are changing the outcome of the game. So um, we're always looking to do that. It did seem like it was starting to, starting to be a little more ramped up at the end of practice today, especially. Are you guys looking forward to getting the pads on later? Yeah, I mean, you can only go so hard in helmets. Um, it's football-like, it's not football, it's drills, it's refining your craft, but at the end of the day, it's not football. When that pads come on and the lights come on and it's Sunday at noon, that's go time. But for right now, we're just trying to get better. Robert, I, obviously you weren't here last year, you can't comment to that, but they made a concerted effort to upgrade its speed. When you look around, you've been on some teams with some really good speed. When you look around you, do you what do you think of the speed of this defense? Yeah, I think it's more than that. It's having 11 hungry football players who are on the same page, who are running the same defenses, who are communicating with each other, who are flying to the ball. 
everyone's fast in this league. Everyone knows how to run. Everybody's got fast players, but it's those teams that don't have to turn and run and think, oh, should I run to that ball? It's no, turn and haul ass. We're, we're getting this guy to the ground, and we're trying to steal that ball from him at all costs. So it's, it's more of a mindset than it is a speed thing. You played with guys like Cam Hayward, Robert, um, not Robert Smith, um, Stephon Tuitt, Marvin Leal, and Chris Wormley. Can you talk about the transition moving on from those defensive linemen to the defensive linemen you have here? Yeah, like I said, we're still in the stages of helmets only. Um, so we can only do so much in terms of team run, in terms of running pass rush games, five man blitzes. So it's always about that conversation that you have with the D linemen, especially being a player who stands behind them. I always like to tell my linemen, maybe you're a B-gap player, maybe you're an A-gap player, I don't care. Go eat. We're going to make you right. The coaches will fix you up. Go make plays, and we are behind you to make you right. So at the end of the day, I just want them to feel free to go play their games. Day four in training camp in the July Vegas heat, how much different is it compared to Oak Park, to Kalamazoo, Nashville? Yeah. Like I said, like, so weather doesn't really dictate our behavior. It's a circumstance, and at the end of the day, I'm very grateful to be here, very grateful that I get to put on my helmet every day and go out there and practice, whether it's 115 degree, degrees, whether it's negative five like we played last year. It, it's a blessing, so you never take those, those reps for granted. You know every time you go on that field, it could be the last time you ever step on a football field. So, yeah. Um, times with you and interacting with the Raider Nation, being a Raider, how has that been? Yeah, I, I really look forward to getting in the community, getting to know Raider Nation. Um, and not from these podium talks, I want them to see me for my play, for see who I am as a person in the community. So this is just the prelims and I want them to know me for the right reasons. Speaking of community, what's your impressions of the Las Vegas market? The Las Vegas market, you said? Um, the city, you mean? Yeah. I love the city. Uh, I'm a I'm a local now. I bought a house here in Vegas. Uh, I look forward to getting to know the communities. Great food, great weather, beautiful views. I've been loving the mountain views. In the summer, I spent a lot of time at Red Rock. Um, I like getting outdoors and the nature. So yeah. Going back to when I covered you at Kalamazoo, you've always been a thumper, high-intensity guy. Question, training cramps grueling. So I know you're excited to get the pads on, but having been through so many camps, is it like, hey, I'm going to enjoy, there's no physicality right now? Uh, that's kind of a hard question to say. It's part of the process. As an NFL player, um, you need these days to get prepared for the days with the pads. So it's just about getting our legs back under us, refining those crafts. So when the pads do come on, you're not thinking, you're just going out there and playing football. Robert, with such a emphasis on takeaways, what does adding a guy who not only has 32 career interceptions, but also has a certain edge at cornerback and Marcus Peters, what can he add to this defense? I think he could add so much and having a guy with that type of history the ball searching history, he's lived that life. It doesn't happen by accident that he gets his hand on the ball so many times. You watch his film every single time he can. He's going for that strip out. He's going for that punch out. He's looking for ways and coverage to come off his receiver, even though he might be covering a man to man and go make a play. And uh, you need guys like that, especially to help the young guys grow, to see that it's possible to do some two jobs at once. Yeah, I'm going to take care of mine, but now I'm going to go help my brother out. And he's a great uh, leader. Playing against him for so many years, I've seen it in person. I've seen him, him craft, and uh, he does a great job, and he's been great with the young players so far. Okay. Thank you, bro. Thank you, guys. Talked to Andre and Colton earlier this week, and they said they noticed that you seem to be stronger and bigger uh, coming out of the offseason. Uh, I guess first question is how, how much are you up to now, weight wise, and, and why did you feel like it was an instance for you to you know focus on that in the offseason? Uh, so I've gotten around the 315 ish range uh, this season. So last year, uh, around week seven ish, I came down with a really bad cold. And I wasn't eating, or sleep, like I wasn't really getting good rest, and I was so sick. Like I ran a fever, like 102. 
uh, before that Texans game. And I literally dropped maybe like 12 pounds within like three days. And so I got pretty sick uh, early on. So this past offseason, I just want to get back to feeling like myself. And so for me, I was like, I played really well. And uh, Chargers week was when I was like 315-ish. So I was like, OK, that's where I want to get back to. And then strength-wise, just focusing on uh, trying to build my base a little bit more and then trying to even my upper body with that as well. After that, to get back to feeling all right, or was it the rest of the year kind of lingered? Literally, like the rest of the year, I was trying to get back to how I felt. But with me burning so many calories throughout the week, uh, just trying to fight back out of that hole, it was definitely tough for me. Like towards the end of the season, I want to say I was like 307 ish, but I never really got back to where I wanted to be. Dylan, last year you told me you focused on your technical footwork in terms of firing off the ball. Can you talk about that and what that progress has been like going into year two and the, just the general benefit of being in year two? Yeah, it definitely feels different. Uh, just me feeling more comfortable like last year. Obviously, there was a lot of different terms that I was trying to focus on and finish. And I feel like my fits were uh, a little bit of me just having to understand what it is I was trying to do. So this year, I feel a lot more confident and comfortable in the scheme. So I can focus so much more on that rather than trying to learn the playbook and trying to learn exactly what I need to do uh, for work and fundamental wise. When you're when you're in college and your off season starts, you're still going to school, doing all that type of stuff. Yeah. As an NFL player, your off season's over. It's still your job as an NFL player. Now, how how, how different was that that mindset of being able to go into an off season, not worry about any of that, just worry about your craft and your job? It definitely feels great, uh, especially coming off of your rookie season. They always say it's going to be the longest. That's how you hit your rookie ball because you really don't get that break. And so this first year, I was just thinking, be disciplined in the way you do things because obviously we're all competing for a job when we get back. And so for myself, I was just like, as soon as we got done, I took a little break for myself and my wife. And then after that, it was just like, OK, it's time for work. So I really didn't think too much about it. And then just enjoying the break of my body, uh, being able to take that uh, relaxation, be able to get massages and things like that, just making sure I could take care of my body to the fullest so that when it was time for camp, I was able to be 100%. Last time you were able to do that because after your last year at Memphis, you're in, you know, preparing mode for the draft and getting ready for the draft. Yeah, and all of that. So there's probably not a break at that point. The last time I like took real good self care was maybe like sixth grade. Or something like that. Like it's been a long time since I've just had a full summer off to where, okay, I'm really just focused on this. I can really just enjoy my time. So this was really nice being able to get your work done by like one or two, and then you have the rest of the day. Most days I was just like that felt great. Some self evaluation. You said that you kind of fight an uphill battle uh, in the last season, but you still played relatively well. You know, does that you know give you more confidence going into a year where it's like if I can just stay healthy, put it all together, like this is what I can do. Absolutely. And then for myself, just getting that extra year with the guys. I mean, that's the one of the biggest things with offensive line, just making that link, making sure that we're all on one accord. And so just having a full year under my belt, under this game, being back to myself, being healthy, and then on top of that, just having that communication with the guys. I feel like it's going to be a really terrific year. Dylan, you had a very successful rookie year, and I want to ask you about a rookie, UDFA, McClendon Curtis. Mm. They like him, they're high in him, very high football IQ. Reminds a lot of people of you. What do you see in him? And, and I know you're still young, but have you been able to mentor him? And what do you th what do you think of him? Big Kurt, man. Uh, big Kurt, he's a very smart player, uh, really big guy, and he has really big and strong hands. And so obviously, uh, prediction-wise, I feel like he's going to be a really big part of that. And then just run black and wise, he's a really good built over round. I was just like, he has really nice size, really good hands, and really good length at that position. And so obviously those are things that uh, you look for within the guard. And just his ability to be able to play and then learning the offense is something that's really big for him. So he's been able to come in and do that and then just be able to showcase a little bit that he's been doing a really good job at that. Mm -hmm. You started games at both guard positions and at center last year. And, and Coach McDaniels has talked off about, especially on the offensive line, how much how key versatility is. Personally, how key is it to you? Uh, obviously, that was something that I was really focused on within my first year. Before you get into the league, it's just like you really don't have your role. So uh, one thing Josh always told us was you make your role whatever it is. Like, whatever you make it, that's your role. And so for me, uh, I was just thinking, OK, I didn't know where I was going to be at. I didn't know where I was going to start at. And so I never really had a thought, OK, once I get there, get comfortable. Because I knew that in the league, anything can fluctuate from guard to center. And I knew I was going to be interior. I just never had the thought of what it would be. And so when I went through three positions by week five, I was just like, that was what I expected the business to be because I didn't know what it was going to be. And so having that foundation of, OK, you can be really anywhere in the interior, uh, I just had that mindset that I just need to be on go and ready whenever. How fine is that line then between, OK, I'm versatile. I can play wherever they need me to play. But then also, I need to get comfortable in one spot so that I can show them that I belong here. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just like 
and we had that saying sort of at Memphis, like you just have to be an offensive lineman. You really don't have a guard position or a center position. It's just like you play offensive line. So whatever you need to coaches uh, for you to play, that's what you'll play. In college, you had a kind of journey where you gained a lot of weight over time. Did that kind of help inform you, you know, coming into this offseason to, you know, fine tune your physique since you'd already kind of been through it before? Yes. Yeah, so, like, for me in college, I was sort of battling uh, my weight progression. So uh, I came in as a tight end, and I was like maybe 240 ish. And then I just kept trying to pound from there. So jumped to 270 one year, and then 280, 290. And then my final season, I want to hit. Say I hit like 315 ish or 316. That was the heaviest I've been in my life. And before I had said that, I was like, no way I'll play like offense line or no way I'll get that big. I've never touched 300. And I'm hitting 315. It was like sort of crazy at the time. And so for me, uh, just trying to make sure that I kept battling. And then I played around 310, 315 my senior year. And I was like, okay, I feel comfortable, but I know how to get there to where I can maintain it. And so that was my really biggest thing that helped me in Memphis. How beneficial is it for you that you look down the offensive line? And they're guys that you played with last year. It's, it's the same group. Obviously, there are people competing, but the fact that you have that continuity and you guys all know each other, you know how each other think. Uh, it feels great because you can sort of have unspoken things and you can see it and you won't even really have to say it. So there may be a change in the defense to where we should have to normally say something to be able to communicate throughout the offensive line. But with all of our eyes being connected to one person, it's just like it really doesn't have to be said. And so I feel like that's something that really helps offensive linemen play fast and play better together. Dylan, what are some of your goals heading into this year? I know last year you had some goals as a rookie, but what are some of your goals now that you're entering year two? Uh, just to keep improving uh, each and every day. I just want to get a little bit better than I did uh, the day before. And so last year, I was like, there was sort of a foundation set, being able to play as many games as I did as a rookie. And so for this year, I just want to be able to continue to grind each and every day and just get 1% better. We talked earlier about you know battling sickness and trying to work your way back and um, that process. How much of a mental struggle is that as well to just kind of like deal with like trying to, trying to battle back in the way that you were? It was definitely tough. Uh, just once again, at that time, I was still trying to find my way. So I literally went from, I think, center for the first two games back to guard around that area, uh, right. And so um, just a lot of the playbook, trying to learn it still. Uh, and then week in and week out, it's just like different schemes, going to be different defenses that you see. So trying to learn that and then just trying to work on myself uh, physically. Uh, I was just trying to eat trying to get back to the way I was, trying to do uh, any way I could, protein, just make sure I still try to take care of my body because obviously just being light at that position and then just being sickly, uh, it definitely was tough that week for sure. But then uh, for myself, just trying to make sure that I was still staying on top of my fundamentals and technique because I was just like, that's a really big thing. I really don't have uh, the way that I want to be at during that time period. So just trying to make sure, okay, I fine tune everything else so that I can overcome it. How do you assess all the last season when you look back and you talk about everything you went through? How, how do you think it was? How do you think your rookie season was? And where are like the specific areas you want to improve on this year? I feel like I had an okay rookie season. Uh, definitely a lot of things to learn from. Like even just watching film from last year, I was just like, why did I really? Why did I do that? But it was because it was just like I wasn't. 100% comfortable. It was just like I was learning so much and it was a lot of information uh, put on me and it was a lot of load, but I just had to realize that, okay, like this is what the NFL is. And so it's not going to slow down for you. So you just got to pick it up and keep moving. And then on top of that, just uh, getting close with the guys. It's just like the way we communicate so well together now, it's just like it flies so much faster. So it's not even as much thinking. And uh, I was talking to Josh the other day on the field and he just asked me, how does it feel? And I was just like, I feel so much better because I'm confident now. It's like, this is not my first time hearing these terms. It's like, okay, I had a whole year under my belt and now we're going through the same thing, so now everything's done slow down for me. I feel like that's when you can play at your best. What was it like for you to cap off your rookie season with a wedding? A lot of the readers did that too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, I don't know what was going on during that time period, but <laughs> I just think, uh, first of all, it was an enjoyable day. Uh, i never forget it. And um, it was it was long. I will say it was a very long day. Uh, we literally wake up at 6 o'clock, and you're literally going to the end of the night. And so, uh, But it was something that uh, my wife and I, we were trying to get done, and we literally got engaged right before she finished her schooling in Memphis, and so we came down together. And uh, it was just a long journey, and we really we, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed our day. It was just a blessing to be able to do that with a woman that I've been with for seven years, and so it was amazing. Two more questions, guys. Dylan, I want to ask you quickly about Greg Van Roten. He's a guy that comes in. He's durable. He knows the game. How much? How does he help this offensive line? 
Yeah, GBR, he came in, he's what, I think year 12 right now, so he's played a lot of ball, seen a lot of things, and has a lot of experience. Even today, GBR pulled me to the side when we were working some past pro drills, and he was just giving me little tips and tricks on what he's done, what he's seen, and what's really helped him maintain and be able to stay in the league for so long. So, obviously, uh, I'm just trying to be a sponge and soak in a lot of those things that he teaches me, tells me, and then just seeing the way he m maneuvers in meetings. Like, the way he's picked it up so fast by the time he's gotten here has been crazy. Uh, it's just like him hearing him be able to spit out the terms as if he's been here the entire time. Like this is his system. It's really amazing to see. Yeah. You guys, good. Yes, sir. Awesome. Appreciate y'all.